Venerable religious and dear parishioners, it's quite clear that the epistle and gospel today are about charity, are about compassion. St. Paul explains in this marvelous uh, set of words about how to practice charity towards one another. And we see Jesus practicing this compassion and charity to the poor widow who had, of course, lost a husband and now had lost a son, and he raises her son from the dead. So I would like to preach about charity, about compassion today, and maybe we could start with the definition of the word compassion. Where does it come from? I always like to see the etymology of words, the origin of words. Where do they come from? And of course, most of our words, more than half in English, come from Latin. So we go to the Latin and we find what compassion means. Com is a variant of cum, which means with, and pat, uh, patior passus means to suffer. So we see then what compassion is. It means to suffer with somebody. To take it upon, to take some of what's weighing them down and to take it upon ourselves if there's some way to do that. And of course, we always feel like somebody has lightened our bird and if they're willing to be with us, to assist us in some way when uh, difficulty or we're dealing with some difficulty or a cross or, or burden. As a matter of fact, twice in today's epistle, St. Paul used the word burden. He says, Bear one another's burdens. He says, yes, each one will bear his own burden, but charity means to help somebody else with their burden. What a beautiful way of seeing the practice of charity. And perhaps we could pray for that grace, the grace to be more sensitive, to be more aware of the burden, the weight that somebody is carrying. Sometimes this even visibly shows itself. We talk about a person bowed down with grief or his, uh, their shoulders are slumped over because he or she is dealing with physical pain or em- emotional, an emotional burden or sorrow or discouragement. Um, What are we called upon to do? We are called upon to lighten that person's burden, see if we can help in some way. Sometimes we can't do something seemingly tangible. Somebody's dying of cancer. Can't take that away, can you? But you lighten that person's burden by spending time with that person, letting him or her know you are praying for this intention. You do acts of service for them, especially when they're not able to do it themselves. St. Paul says something amazing. He says, if you bear one another's burdens, you will fulfill the law of Christ. Remember what the two great commandments are. First of all, to love God with our whole heart, mind, soul, and strength. It always has to come first. So often it doesn't, but it should come first. And then for the love of God, we help others. We practice the spiritual and corporal works of mercy. We are lightening their burden. We are fulfilling the law of Christ. You know, this epistle is 
is so good. If I had more time, I would try to go through in detail because there's just so many wonderful insights that St. Paul gives us uh, to charity. Uh, he says, don't be desirous of vainglory, provoking, and being. And then he says, brethren, even if a person is caught doing something wrong, you who are spiritual, instruct such a one, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Yes, people do wrong things. Sin is committed. But what St. Paul is saying, that as we tell this person, don't do that, that we do so in a spirit of humility, mindful that we ourselves, there but for the grace of God, go I. Have to avoid the holier than thou sort of attitude where we, you know, glorify ourselves as we're, you know, instructing somebody else. We should do so in a spirit of humility. And remember, too, charity does not mean compassion on sin. Charity means compassion for the sinner, not for the sin. It's a difficult distinction to make, but it needs to be made. We just celebrated the Feast of St. Augustine this past week. He gave us that wonderful saying, hate the sin, but not the sinner. It would be false charity to say, love the sin, accept the sin. Sin is hateful. Sin is evil. Sin offends God. And so to put St. Augustine's words in another way, love the sinner, but do not love the sin. That's true charity. That's true compassion. St. Paul says, instruct one in a spirit of meekness. Help that person to not do that. And then St. Paul continues to tell us to be humble. If you think you're something, you are nothing. Well, that's pretty powerful. Don't glorify yourself. Stay humble. Practice humility even as you stand up for the truth and stand up for what's right and, and help others. Each one will bear his own burden. Yes, every one of us has crosses. And remember, it's the cross that will save us. It's the sufferings that purify us, the sufferings that humble us. It's the sufferings that make us better. It's our the cross that we have to bear. Sometimes it feels too great for us. But remember, with the grace of God, we can bear our crosses. We need to reach out to God. Please help me. Blessed Mother, please help me to carry my cross. But it is the cross that purifies. It helps our, us to grow spiritually. If we didn't have the cross, we would be flabby and weak spiritually. We wouldn't be able to grow. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. St. Paul also puts in, uh, it seems like another point off to the side here, but he says, remember God is not mocked for what a man sows that he will reap. He who sows in the flesh from the flesh also will reap corruption. He who sows in the spirit, from the spirit, he will reap life everlasting. Again, something from St. Augustine, sow an act, reap a habit. So true. We are what we repeatedly do. And this is why we have to conquer sin in our lives so it doesn't become a habit. We're always forming one kind of habit or another. Keep sowing good things. And fortunately, the more we do something, it becomes easier, but let it not be something sinful, because that will get easier too. So we want to keep practicing doing good deeds and making habits. He who sows in the Spirit, from the Spirit he will reap life everlasting. 
And this next sentence, it's so wonderful. And 